And Sean mentioned one of her partners is Recology, and our next speaker, Robert Reed, is uh, a spokesman for Recology and uh, their recycling program. He's going to be talking about how um, uh, uh, San, the San Francisco Zero Waste Initiative, including the city's composting collection program, and uh, which has generated international interest as it helps to achieve many significant environmental benefits. And Robert helps lead many tours and presentations for delegations visiting San Francisco, San Francisco to learn about these uh, new programs that are on the cutting edge. So people are coming here to find about his programs and taking them back home and adopting them. He's also going to be talking about the international movement by young people to encourage cities to replicate San Francisco's curbside composting collection program. So when you put your compostables in your pail and it goes downstairs into the green bin, you're going to find out tonight where it goes after that. And that's what a lot of people are coming to say, we, we need to do that too. And he's going to explain why that's such a positive change. So please give Robert a big warm welcome. I'm very, very excited to be here and very happy to be invited and so glad that you all are, are here. Um, I don't know if you know the spot, but it's called Thornton Beach. So if you go straight west here and you go to Ocean Beach and then on a low tide, if you walk south for about an hour, you arrive at this wonderful place called Thornton Beach. Um, and I just show it here to start off positively and share something wonderful with you and remind us all these are the types of things we're trying to protect. Um, a bit on the challenge. Globally, we produce 3.5 million tons of rubbish every day. So how much is that? If you packed it into garbage trucks and you park them end to end, they would stretch from Miami, Florida to Seattle, Washington every day. Just a amazing amount of material. And so we're seeing a lot of landfills that are overflowing. We know that a lot of incinerators are operating seven days a week. Um, and of course, these things have great uh, impacts on the environment. Those cranes, uh, my boss wanted me to point out, those cranes are actually carrying stuff up to the top of the, that landfill. So, um, you know, it was mentioned about the tours I do. Um, toured uh, delegations from 150 countries in five years, and sometimes I'm asked, how much rubbish do Americans make? The answer is 4.5 pounds a day. And it's believed to be the highest of any country in the world. So here we really have a responsibility to reduce, as Sean mentioned, to reduce how much rubbish we make. If you look at that rubbish, um, this is uh, a analysis done in France, but it really looks very much the same here. The biggest piece of, of the material going into landfills and incinerators is food scraps and things that we could be composting, things that came from farms and really ought to be going back to farms in the form of compost. Um, also, I wanted to mention uh, I do a lot of volunteer work for groups like this of young people that uh, I've organized zero waste uh, groups, clubs, uh, organizations, really. Um, there's 300 of them in Italy. There's uh, Zero Waste Europe, Zero Waste France. This is from Canada, um, where I went to uh, support them in a zero waste festival in Montreal. And when these groups link, they become a very powerful movement. They're typically organized by people between the ages of 20 and 30, and most of them are young women. Um, here's uh, Zero Waste France, so they have uh, La Maison du Zero Deschet, the House of Zero Waste. It's their uh, bureau there in office. It's nine people, really intelligent people. They could make a tremendous amount of money if they wanted to go into some other profession, but they've committed their lives to uh, helping protect the environment. Uh, I encourage you to go there next time you're in Paris. Um, Sean showed this picture here of the bins we have in San Francisco. Uh, within three weeks, we will finish, we're, we're making these recycling bin larger and the landfill bin smaller in, within, in, at residential properties across the city. So within three weeks, we'll finish delivering the bins. It's an 18-month project. Want to hear some good news? 
just by changing the size of the bins and by doing some outreach associated with that. Recycling is up 10%, landfilling is down 10%, and composting is up between 2 and 3%. So a lot of cities are looking to copy that. Um, this is a kitchen pail from my kitchen. We give them out free. And so in go your eggshells and your food scraps, uh, particularly your coffee grounds would be a great thing to put in there. I think we talked before about banana peels. Uh, you know, coffee grounds have a very big carbon footprint. They're very rich in minerals and nutrients. They actually look like compost. All of these things came from the farm. They ought to go back to the farm. Um, so you empty this kitchen pail into the green bin every couple of days. And if you want a sweet little trick, put a used paper or napkin at the bottom and it will absorb moisture and help control odor. Okay, this is a um, school cafeteria in Ohio Two very smart teachers there designed a recycling station for all the students to use. They copied the San Francisco colors, so green for recycling, blue for composting. They put some communication on the table. They put some up above. And if you look down in the corner, they even have a, um, a red bucket. So if kids have some milk left in their bottle and they don't want to drink it, they can empty it into that milk bucket. Nationally, we are trying to reduce liquids and food in recycling because China is no longer taking the recycled plastics and that's changed the worldwide market for recyclables. So the, the markets now demand uh, fewer impurities in the bales of recycled materials. So please empty your soda cans and don't toss any food in the recycle bin shake out your food container. So here's a picture of those coffee grounds. Um, if any of us who enjoy coffee or tea, those, those coffee and tea have very large <coughs> footprints, environmental footprints, we, but we really must compost these materials and they actually smell good. So this is, a, I have a colleague that calls coffee grounds the gateway drug to get people to start <laughs> composting. Um, with, by the way, we're regulated by the city. The city's really the boss for us, and then we provide the programs. And with this, at the city's direction and with their support, we opened this new um, transfer station here in December to receive the compostable material. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. Um, so in all those green bins, you've got all those food scraps and we as you can see if you look at it you get a sense for the feeling it, there's a density to it there's a heaviness to it and so um, of all the different types of rubbish that exist this is really the most important this is where the nutrients are and this is where the carbon is we started collecting this in San Francisco in 1996 for composting other people in our industry thought we were out of our minds and and I'm very proud to tell you today we recycle in San Francisco 700 tons a day of bottles, cans, paper, and cardboard. Remember that number, 700 tons a day. We're doing 800 tons a day of material that we can compost. And this city composting has surpassed recycling. And with this new facility, we're going to go to 1,000 tons a day. This is what it looks like when the trucks drop it off. This is what it looks like at our compost facility, which is outdoors. Um, this is the finished material in our blending pad. And you can see the pieces are very small. You see the dust on the fingers. I just have one more minute here. This is a, from a vineyard that's using the compost. And it's not just the grapes, it's the whole health of the, of the plant. This is the point of this picture. These are, of course, look at the tomato plants. Look at the size and the poles he has to use to hold up the tomato plants. This is a result of farming with compost. Some, and so now I just want to show you how far we can take this program. This is a vineyard called Chateau Montalina. In the U.S., we have these hallways between the rows of vines, and we're using the compost to grow mustard and other cover crops that pull carbon out of the atmosphere. So uh, this is three weeks from now. I want you all to remember this picture. This is my last slide. I cannot show you a picture of carbon in the atmosphere. 
but I can show you a picture of plants that pull carbon out of the atmosphere. That's mustard on a vineyard grown with compost made from food scraps collected in San Francisco. So when you're putting your food scraps in that kitchen pail, you're actually doing something about climate change. Okay.